Thank you very much, Professor Mesuzawa. Thank you for um, organizing this Congress yet again. And uh, it's my job today to present this talk on global neurology. Where are we? And we, are, we have where we are going from now. And um, I just would like to say that uh, the, uh, would like to call upon all of you to look at the situation we have been in in the last maybe 60 years since our inception and look where we are now. Now, this is our 60th anniversary. This was not mentioned so far. This year, the WFN is 60 years old. So the age of 60 means something. It was a few years ago for me, but it meant something at that stage. You are matured and you are wise and have you done what you wanted in your life? And this is probably the theme of today. We were established in, on the 22nd of July, 1957. At that time, the world was different. There was the Cold War, and um, we managed to get neurologists from east and west, and uh, we were established in Brussels, and our first president was Ludo von Bogart. Our establishment was not possible without the generous financial support from the United States National NINDB. And this was crucial. And in those days, the grant was huge. It was $204,000 that was given to the WFN. We had um, quadrennial congresses until 2009, and since then we have biennial congresses. And these are the last 10 presidents. Um, the world has changed in the lifetime of these 10 presidents. We used to have a president. The president has a four-year term, which used to be renewable. Now it isn't. Um, and we live in a different world now. We have changed a lot. And the change is probably more noted in the past few years. It's now uh, we are able to deal with much more, in a much more precise way with all manner of conditions which require expert knowledge. Our spectrum has changed. This spectrum has led to specialists. It's no longer possible to call yourself a neurologist. People say, well, what kind of a neurologist are you? Specialties, and that creates problems for a global organization like ours because in resource poor settings, this may not be possible to have specialists in various fields. Somebody who deals with mitochondrial disease only, well, that may be okay in some parts of the world, but in the vast majority of the rest of the world, that's not possible. So it is incumbent upon those working and living in the affluent parts of the world to impart some of their experiences to others. This, as I see it, is our role of the WFN, and we can see that the international cohesion and um, really collaboration is crucial. This change in our uh, specialty has led to better management and thereby to better income. You saw this morning the wonderful, the wonderful work of robotics and the wonderful work that we heard from Edward Moser on single grid cell and how we work. We understand better what we do. So how can we convey all this across the world globally? Well, I borrowed this slide from Johan Ali. Being Norwegian, he's very fond of uh, icebergs, as you can see, but he thoughtfully put what is under the surface, the map of Africa, for a good reason. Neurology has been underestimated, under-recognized, and under-resourced. Um, the Global Burden of Disease Study was released a few hours ago, and I think probably this is the quickest Congress that can present data which is three or four hours old when Valerie Fegan this morning presented his data. It was just released midnight, so we are ahead of time, so it was about three or four hours ago. And in it you see that neurological disorders, as you saw this morning, are the leading cause of DALIs, disabilities, 25.7 million, and the second leading cause group of deaths, 99.4 million in 2015. Now, you would say that with these figures, well, the world should recognize us. The answer is, unfortunately, no. And you would say, why? Well, the reason is this. You look at the European 
WHO, WHO region, which is based in Copenhagen. And this is their data on projected DALIs lost in, between 2008, 2015, 2030. So it is current and projected. And you can see down here infectious diseases, these are the figures, malignant neoplasms, figures, neuropsychiatric disorders, here, cardiovascular disorders, here. Well, you think, where are we then? And we are embedded within this neuro, psychiatric, whatever that combination means, and cardiovascular. But there is no brain diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, all the things that we heard that we are the number one cause of disability and the second cause of death across groups. And the reason for that is this, WHO. The WHO is the organization, whether you love them or hate them, it's like something in the United Kingdom they call Marmite. I don't know if the rest of the world knows what Marmite. You either love it or hate it. But the WHO has classified the main cause of death and disability, second cause of death, main cause of disability, which is stroke, as not a neurological disease, but a cardiovascular disease. Now, they claimed for 62 years that it is a disease of vessels. So varicose veins and stroke are classified together. So when they produce data, when the government of X country, say Japan or Philippines or any country, sends data to the WHO, there is no neurology in it. And the WHO doesn't even know. So governments don't know where to allocate resources. And that has been the problem. Now, because of this classification, the reporting was very erroneous. We started work as the WHO topic advisory group, and I had the honor and pleasure, really. Well, I don't know if it's pleasure. It's been going on for eight years now. And you can see the membership, and you can see that Hidehiro Misusawa is a member, and some members are sitting here in the audience as well, trying to say that we reclassify the the diseases of the nervous system. Because it still had prion diseases as a slow virus infection. So if you report up till now, ICD-11 has not been released, up till now, prion diseases are not reported to the WHO. They don't exist in ICD-10. And this is facts. This is what you're, all the countries you live in report back to the WHO, and this is what they report. So this is the issue that we have been trying to work against the tide for all these years because the WHO is a wonderful organization but is very resistant to change. We managed to get agreement from the cardiologist and they said, well, we have nothing to do with you, you're fine, cerebrovascular disease is your problem. That was agreed about seven years ago. And the person who has been instrumental working with me in this and working with all of us is Bo Norvig who's sitting here in the front row. We worked hard and we convinced them that Stroke is a brain disease. You would think this is straightforward. Well, maybe not. After agreement was reached and we felt happy for a few years, then came the reversal of the WHO, where they said, no, it is a vascular disease, and therefore goes back to vascular disease. So years of work were suddenly in, I think it was September of 2016, came to an end. So we worked hard including meetings face-to-face -face, and including letters to journals. And these are the letters to The Lancet. This is the letter which we wrote, and you can see here, uh, presidents of the uh, member of the World Stroke Organization, ourselves, uh, and uh, Valerie Fegan, and all the members of the, well, the, the, the officers of the WFN, and Vladimir Hachinsky, we wrote a letter that saying that the medical rationale for stroke being a disease of the brain is overwhelming, we thought. So the purpose of ICD-11 to produce a classification that reflects the advances in knowledge and concepts for the 21st century. In the same issue, the Lancet editor asked the WHO for a rebuttal, which they did, so the articles were published side by side. And they say in their conclusion, although the sequelae of cerebrovascular condition may largely be related to the nervous system, the acute phase is clearly vascular. So the answer is no. 
and their reasoning was that vascular lesions affecting the central nervous system have been in the diseases of vascular system chapter since ICD-7, which means 62 years. And then we didn't give up, and I think the issue with the WHO is you don't give up, you keep working. And we came to various meetings after intense discussion, then finally, uh, on the 1st of April, initially when I received the email that weekend, I thought it was an April's fool joke, but it came that morning saying WHO reversed their decision, stroke is now officially a brain disease. So, <laughs> so this is the new classification, which is open to all of you. It's still, uh, we are receiving consultations from anybody who wants to look at it. And you can see here that the members of our department in the WHO is now stroke is part of the nervous system. Now, this is fantastic because this only proves that the, all, the, all what you heard from Valerie Fegan this morning wasn't possible, and Valerie said that very nicely to me, uh, is it wasn't possible without this. And you saw this slide from Valerie, and you saw how many deaths there are from stroke dementia, how many DALIs there are, number one cause of DALIs. So this will take a decade or two to filter through governments. This will take time before they realize that neurodegenerative diseases are diseases of the brain, and the brain dis diseases reserve funding, reserve manpower, reserve spending on hospitals, nurses. It trickles down the whole concept of healthcare. And you heard today the Global Bird in Neurology Disease, which is published in Neurology Online. I think we are delighted that we have the editor of uh, Lancet Neurology. I hope she's in the audience, but she's here in the corner. There she is. Thank you, Elena. So uh, I think she's here to see how we do, and uh, this is our window to international neurology. So today we know that the number one cause of DALI's disability adjusted life years are neurological diseases, and the number one, uh, the second cause of death are neurological diseases. So the whole concept has changed. Now this is another slide which you saw this morning. I'll not go through this, but to say that, as you can see the figures here, um, we still have stroke and we have here dementia that goes up with age, as you can see, and Valerie explained his slides wonderfully this morning to all of us. So, we move on to another um, not struggle, but another explanation to give to the rest of the world, what is called the non-communicable diseases. Neurologists may not be aware of this name and concept in the international arena and in the WHO, and more importantly, in the United Nations. And this is important. These are the figures, and you've heard all of this. I need to, don't need to tell you the millions affected with epilepsy, the millions affected with Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and dementia. And this is the second struggle we face with the ICD. Dementia is still classified as a mental disease, mental health disease, which is fine. But the causes of dementia, we worked very hard to make them neurological. So the causes, such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body disease, multi-infarct dementia, should all be under the neurology chapter, while the word dementia remains under mental health. Now, the reasoning for the WHO is that Psychiatrists see more dementia, so they are more likely to catch the true prevalence, incidence of dementia if it is reported under the mental health chapter. This is another fight which, uh, which we are heading for. Non-communicable diseases is a huge big issue with the uh, WHO and with the United Nations as the United Nations approved that we should combat non-communicable diseases. You would think, well, non-communicable, that really includes us. It doesn't. And it included the old cardiovascular disease, chronic respiratory disease, cancers, and diabetes. These are the four big topics that the United Nations approved in a resolution in 2015, I think, to combat. And the resolution is very clear that if you reduce salt intake, you stop smoking, you exercise more, 
and you um, treat these risk factors, obesity, the four on four, um, you will, per the um, target is to reduce by one third mortality from NCDs. So this is the aim of the uh, United Nations Declaration, which was approved by the Assembly as a policy that all governments should pursue. And we are trying to see, well, where is neurology? We managed to get, and you don't think it's a lot, but we managed to get this word in. It wasn't in the declaration. So we managed to get, including behavioral, developmental, and neurological disorders, which constitute a major challenge for sustainable development. Now, sustainable development is a big issue because they set targets for that which are binding. So if a government has signed to the United Nations and the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs signed to that declaration, then they are bound by it and people can say you did not deliver on what you signed for. So because of this, the global conference is going to be held in, th in four weeks' time in Montevideo. And here, these are heads of state, and we tried very hard for the last maybe seven months to get in a neurology kind of statement. Eventually, we managed to do so, and I am honored and delighted that on behalf of neurosciences in general, I'm not only allowed to say a statement, but I'm allowed to verbally speak. I know what to speak to heads of states for three minutes is a major task that I will hope to do and, pre and give the message that at last, following the Global Burden of Disease study that Valerie presented this morning, following the ICD reclassification, proper classification of disease, we are now a force and we need to find, we need our rights basically, which have been denied from us. I'm sorry to be melodramatic, but these are facts for 62 years. Now, the other, th the other issue which was published on Friday and it is online, WHO, you will find WHO second edition atlas, and this is the atlas. That I'm only presenting this slide because Tarun Dua from the WHO is presenting it on Wednesday morning. So those of you who want to hear uh, about how many neurologists, uh, how many countries um, have anti-Parkinson's drugs free of charge, how many have warfarin, how many have et cetera, et cetera, how many countries have um, have legislations for neurological disease, please, uh, if you want to attend, it is a plenary lecture on Wednesday morning. And there is a session between myself and Tarun Dua on the same day, going further into details of the Atlas of Neurology. If you like it, it's, you can download it, you can download the slides, it's online under the WHO as of Friday. So these two papers, the Global Burden of Disease and the Atlas, were designed to come directly timed with this Congress. And you can see here the figures, they speak for themselves. This is the median, median, I repeat, number of neurologists in Europe, and this is the number in Africa. I mean, there's no, no issues about these. This is where we are. This is the number in Southeast Asia, and this is the number of Af in Africa. So the needs are huge, the suffering is huge. So when I started talking about management and subspecialty and all that, I think in my own mind, I have to take it within, with this background. But this is the first edition of the Atlas, which was a sellout, by the way. And this is the second edition. And there has definitely been an improvement. Not a lot in Africa, but there is. And this is why we, the WFN, is our duty to train people. Now, I refer again to Lancet Neurology, to Elena and to a paper which Lancet published, um, is it two weeks ago? Training non-physicians as neurosurgeons in sub-Saharan Africa. It was a very good paper, and this has been going on. Surgical procedures, neurosurgical procedures, are being done in Africa because there are not only there are no neurologists or no neurosurgeons, but there are no doctors. So this is so important, and this is where the uh, world is working at this moment in time, and it is our job to improve this. Yes, they can do burr holes, they can insert shunts, uh, or the person will die. So the choice is very, very stark and clear. This is why our programs 
are, have concentrated in Africa, but also elsewhere. And you can see, I'll not go through this, you'll find it in our booth, that we have training centers now in Africa, by Africans, for Africans. And these centers started following the successful Congress, which had that title, for Africa, with Africa in Morocco, in Rabat, then in Cairo, then in Dakar, and soon in Cape Town. It has also starting this year in Mexico for Latin American countries, and I hope after this Congress, at least in one or two areas in Asia. The training is cheaper. There is very little, if any, brain drain, and we qualify neurologists in their locality so that they know the diseases they have and the differences in, uh, in that. So among our other activities, which I'll not go through for the sake of time. We have brain alliances, and we met yesterday between ourselves, between the uh, psychiatrists, and I'm pleased that the president of the World Psychiatric Association is here in the audience, and they have their own session. Um, child neurologists, rehabilitation scientists in the Brain Research Organization, and uh, uh, neurosurgeons. And we always give a session to each of these uh, Brain Alliance members in our Congress, so you will see all of them here, and of course the World Health Organization. And our six regions are here, and we are grateful for the help, both financial uh, and scientific, that we receive from our uh, organizations, uh, neurological organizations across the world, to help us to um, really organize this Congress and the American Academy has been very, very helpful to us to, imp to provide extra funding and extra support, manpower, for all our activities. The European Academy has been wonderful in their work in Africa and in their work with us. As you saw, the Asian Oceanian Society, exactly the same, the Pan-Arab Union, and the newest two unions, regional unions, the Pan-American Federation of Neurological Societies and the Pan-African uh, and the African Academy of Neurology. We also are grateful to all the global neurology networks from the stroke organizations to Peripheral Nerve Society to MS International to um, Alzheimer's Disease International, International Headache Society, ILAE, who have been great in their support and help in really promoting all our programs. So the future, there's no health without brain health, and I think this title came from Vladimir, he's sitting down on the right, or uh, neurology has a definite future after the correct, um, if you like, not statistics, but the facts are known now. So there's a global involvement, we have regional empowerment, and we ask for national participation. Now, after all this, I want to end by mentioning six individuals who passed away since our last Congress. John Walton, Noche Wadia, Bud Rowland, Richard Johnson, Franz Gerstenbrandt, and Henry Barnett. I wanted to find one sentence to describe them all, which is really difficult. But the sentence I came up with is, that each and every one of those individuals have made a difference. Now, instead of asking you to stand for a moment of silence, I'll do the opposite. I ask you to stand and give an ovation to the achievements of these giants of neurology. Thank you. And now, um, came to the end of my talk. I have one more thing to do. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your very comprehensive talk about the global neurology. Thank you very much. Please come to the center. Uh, we, we have the gift. On behalf of the new, uh, Japanese Society of Neurology, uh, I'd like to present our small gift to Professor Shakir for the great help and support to our uh, this uh, WCN 2017 is so successful. <laughs>